as a woman in tech, it's been an interesting journey. I got recruited during a time of very strong male dominated industry services like SEO and website development and content generation was almost entirely male. I mean, I'd roll into these search marketing conferences. That's how I got my start speaking at search marketing conferences. And it was, there was never a line for the women's bathroom. Let's put it that way. I, in fact, I remember going in taking pictures because there was like no women there. It was crazy. Sometimes I'd show up to some of these places and guys would come up to me and say, they'd kind of look at me like, are you lost? Because I had like lipstick on and I actually cared about what it looked like. Even when I was training with Yahoo, <laughs> this happened more than one time where I'd be up in the front of the room getting ready for a speech and a gentleman would roll in. These guys are usually like super techie, like they study paid search and SEO and were very, very serious about it. And I'd, I'd roll in with my lipstick and my hair done and more than one occasion they came up to me and asked me when the presenter was going to show up. And I would look at them and I would say, any minute now. Then when we get started, it was a, maybe it was a little mean, but I loved watching their reaction when they figured out that I was actually the speaker. <laughs> but it, you know, it, it's been, I think, a really interesting advantage for me because I think I can bring the male and the female together. And by looking at data, data is not just numbers. And I think what I was able to bring to the party was understanding the data and then interpreting the human element in the data. Because there's people behind every click. It's not like there's some robot out there generating all these searches. These are people. And they all have different needs and, and wants. And, and rarely do people go to a search engine where they're, they're totally happy. They have everything they want. They're searching for guidance. They're searching for help in a lot of ways. They're searching to find something that will make them more happy. And, and whether you want to call it cliche or not, you know, as a woman, a mother, I am very connected emotionally as well in my life. And bringing that emotional quality, that heart, to a highly technical space is really, I think, where my gifts shine. That I really, when I look at data, I can see the person behind the data. Like I can feel who they are. I can feel what they want. I can, I can hear their struggles. We worked with, on that, <laughs> probably one of the strangest companies I've ever worked with. They weren't a company at all. They were an enclave. So out somewhere in Ohio, I got contacted by um, the Good Shepherd Sisters is what they were called. And they were a convent of nuns and they prayed all day long every day. I'll never forget when they contacted me. I was some kind of a referral through something. You never know how these people come to you. And um, <laughs> they wanted to just pray all day long for people who needed them. And they had a website that was very, very Catholic, like Eucharist and lots of very heavy conversation. So when we started looking at search data, the number one way people search was pray for me. Through Google, they're typing pray for me into Google. Now, I don't know if you guys see the irony in that, but it's a little strange. But then we started looking at it and we're like, okay, so we purchased the domain prayforme.com, which is available. And then we also took a look at how do people want you to pray for them? And so then we started seeing things like prayers for cancer, prayers for children, prayers for grandma, prayers for grandpa, prayers for illnesses of all different kinds, lots of pain showed up. So when we started optimizing their content, it was hilarious because we get on these Zoom calls and it was all these ladies in habits looking at me through the camera. <laughs> that was a very, that was a very interesting, uh, but they were just wonderful and they were totally committed to writing the content about all these different people that needed them. And I think in that moment, it became very clear to me that I brought a very interesting female perspective to, I think, an SEO, male-dominated, male-approached uh, industry. And it, it was through that moment and working with uh, the Good Shepherd Sisters that I was able to, I think, truly identify that it was okay for me to be a female in a technology space. It was okay for me to roll in with lipstick and, and not look like, you know, a nerd. And it was okay for me to speak in plain English. Um, for years, I felt like the only way I was going to get any real respect in my industry was to roll in as a male, meaning I was going to be strong, I was going to be um, authoritative, I was going to be a know-it-all, I was going to, I had to show up in that in order for people to take me seriously. And as I've matured in my business, I now know that when I step back and I give people room to learn on their own and I guide them through the process, that the learning is so much more deep 
and so much more meaningful to them long term in their own business success. So yeah, being a female in a male world, it's pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of my nerd story, if you will, and how I have blossomed in a male-related, dominated field as a woman. We bring the emotional to the game, and that's really what gives us the power to be great marketers. Thanks for watching.